Netflix has emerged in recent years as the thing to have, but does anyone really know how it works? You log into the app or their website and I'll pop the busy screen full of suggestions and recently watched. Do you want to continue watching another episode of something you were watching last night? Do you want to rewatch something you've already watched before? Do you want to be adventurous and try something new from the suggestions? You've never heard of it from your own searches or your friends, so who knows if it's going to be good or not? Netflix knows. The next obvious question would be, how does Netflix know? With over 40 million subscribers in the U.S., Netflix must ensure that their wide array of titles and their suggestions cater to your needs, and it must do so enough to keep you coming back to pay the subscription fee month after month. Who is going to want to pay for a service that they clearly use because they don't want to watch anything on there? And for the 40 million subscribers, Netflix invested a million dollars for a contest to do just that. In 2009, a team led by AT&T research engineers won the competition after three years and improved the previous algorithm by 10% or more. Between Netflix, HBO Now, Amazon Prime Instant Video, and Hulu Plus, Netflix seems to have the widest variety of titles, shows, and movies. There are drawbacks, though, as Netflix only uploads episodes of current TV shows after the whole season is finished, while Hulu Plus gives you the most up-to-date episodes. To compete with other companies that provide the same online streaming service, Netflix must collect information and data on their users in order to give them what they want. They want to know what is the most convenient way to give you what their site has to offer. They have tried giving users a long list of all their available credits, also called God Mode, but that's that right. Users were overwhelmed by the amount of choices that they were given. Netflix has also changed the covers of titles multiple times and tested them on different users in order to see which one was the most successful. Not only does Netflix gather information by performing test you, they also gather copious amounts of information from the users directly as well. They want to know what shows you're watching. What ratings do you give the show? What do you want to search for? What do you browse through? Do you like the suggestions? Among other things. Using this data, they want to actually see what you want to watch, not what you just say you want to watch. This obviously gets complicated when multiple users use the same account, but, it's, but this is getting easier with the ability to create multiple profiles for different people on one account. Now. Netflix's ultimate goal is to get you to watch the show, to watch an episode or a movie all the way through, and to continue using their service. They want your money, and they're trying to figure out the best way to do it. You can get Netflix to play on computers as well as mobile devices such as phones and tablets now. The data retrieval that Netflix receives must be able to accommodate both types of playback as they work differently, especially between phones and computers. Phones are only able to show a limited number of suggestions, titles, and searches have to be inputted manually. While computers have a wider screen and are able to fit multiple titles and scrolling through them is a lot easier. Computers also have an instant search feature that mobile phones do not. The predictive models that Netflix uses must be flexible enough to accommodate both needs without differentiating them as different user behaviors. Netflix must be able to give you what you want when you want it, and then must do so across multiple screens.